Welcome to the Brain Booster channel, where we explore fascinating topics to expand your knowledge and broaden your horizons. Today, we're taking a journey to the Caribbean island of Grenada. Nestled between the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean, Grenada is known for its lush tropical landscapes, rich culture, and vibrant history. This podcast will give you a glimpse into the unique charm of this island nation, and the reasons why it should be on your travel bucket list. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to learn about Grenada. And don't forget, if you enjoy this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel and watch it until the end. Thanks for tuning in. Grenada is a small island nation located in the Caribbean Sea, comprising of the island of Grenada itself, as well as six smaller islands. It has a total land area of just 133 square miles and a population of around 110,000 people. Here are some interesting facts and statistics about the country. Grenada is known as the Island of Spice because it is one of the world's leading producers of nutmeg, mace, and cinnamon. In fact, nutmeg is the country's national symbol, and the spice is featured on the national flag. Grenada is also home to a wide variety of other spices, including ginger, turmeric, and cloves. These spices are grown on small family-owned farms and play an important role in the country's economy. Grenada is a volcanic island, and its highest point is Mount St. Catherine, which stands at 840 meters above sea level. The island is also home to several beautiful waterfalls, including the Annandale Falls, which is a popular tourist destination. Grenada's economy is heavily dependent on tourism, with over half a million visitors each year. The island is known for its beautiful beaches, crystal clear waters, and diverse marine life, which makes it a popular destination for diving and snorkeling. Grenada is also known for its rich cultural heritage. The island has a mix of African, Indian, and European influences, which can be seen in its music, dance, and cuisine. Some of the island's traditional festivals, such as the Spice Moss, are a celebration of this cultural diversity. The island has a high literacy rate of around 98%, and education is free and compulsory up to the age of 16. The island has several schools and a community college, and many students continue their education in the United States, Canada, or the United Kingdom. The official language of Grenada is English, but the island also has its own Creole language, which is spoken by many of its inhabitants. The island's economy has been growing steadily in recent years, with a GDP growth rate of around 3%. The government has been implementing various policies and initiatives to promote economic growth and attract foreign investment. The island has a relatively low crime rate, and it is considered to be one of the safest Caribbean islands. Grenada has a tropical climate, with an average temperature of around 27 degrees Celsius. The island has a rainy season from June to October, but it is still relatively dry during this time. The island is also home to a large number of wildlife, including a variety of bird species and small mammals such as the Mona monkey. In our podcast, we will delve deeper into the history of Grenada, its economy, political situation, and also find out what this incredible island has to offer to tourists. Grenada has a rich and complex history that spans back thousands of years. The island's indigenous people, the Caribs, were the first to settle on the island. They were a fierce and warlike people who had migrated from the Orinoco River region in South America. The Caribs had a well-organized society, with a complex system of government and trade. They were skilled farmers and fishermen, and they also produced pottery and woven baskets. The Caribs lived on the island for several centuries before the arrival of Europeans. The island was first sighted by Christopher Columbus in 1498, but it was not until the late 1700s that the French began to settle on the island. During the colonial period, the indigenous Caribs were displaced from their lands and forced to work on the plantations. Many Caribs were also killed in battles with the European colonizers. The French, who controlled the island for much of the 18th century, established large sugar estates and brought over thousands of enslaved Africans to work the fields. 
Granada played a significant role in the transatlantic slave trade during the colonial period. The island's economy was heavily dependent on the labor of enslaved Africans, who were brought to the island to work on the sugar plantations. Slave trade was a brutal and inhumane practice, and the conditions for enslaved Africans were harsh. They were treated as property and were subject to abuse, mistreatment, and violence. Many enslaved Africans died as a result of the harsh conditions, and the high death rate was compensated by the continuous importation of enslaved people from Africa. The British, who took control of the island in 1783, also continued the practice of enslavement and the use of enslaved labor on the island's sugar plantations. The abolition of the transatlantic slave trade in 1807 by the British and the abolition of slavery in 1834 did not immediately end the practice on the island, as enslaved people continued to work on the plantations for several decades, under a system called apprenticeship which was a form of forced labor. Granada has a rich and complex history, and there have been several key events and figures that have shaped the island's development over the years. One of the most significant events in recent history is the 1983 U.S. invasion of Granada. In 1983, political turmoil broke out in Granada after the Prime Minister Maurice Bishop and several cabinet members were arrested and later killed in a military coup led by one of his deputy Bernard Cord. The situation on the island quickly escalated, and there were concerns that the coup would have a negative impact on the safety of American medical students studying on the island. In response to these concerns, the United States, along with several Caribbean nations, launched a military invasion of Grenada on October 25, 1983. The operation, codenamed Operation Urgent Fury, was led by the U.S. military, and it was the first major military operation in the Caribbean since World War II. The operation was successful in restoring order to the island and restoring democratic rule. The invasion was met with mixed reactions. Some applauded the U.S. for helping to restore order and democracy to the island, while others criticized the U.S. for violating the sovereignty of a sovereign nation. The U.S. government maintained that the invasion was necessary to protect American citizens and restore order to the island. The invasion of Grenada in 1983 was also important in that it marked a shift in U.S. foreign policy towards the Caribbean region. The U.S. became more involved in the affairs of Caribbean nations, and the U.S. government increased its economic and military aid to the region. The history of Grenada is rich and diverse, shaped by its indigenous people, European colonization, the slave trade, and its position as a strategically important island in the Caribbean. The island has a unique blend of African, European, and Indian cultures, which is reflected in its traditional music, dance, and cuisine. The island's culture has been shaped by the indigenous Caribs, who were the first inhabitants of the island. The Caribs had a rich culture, and their legacy can still be seen in the island's traditional festivals such as the Spice Moss, which is a celebration of the island's rich cultural heritage and pays homage to the indigenous Caribs and their legacy. The island's culture was also deeply influenced by the African culture as a result of the transatlantic slave trade. Enslaved Africans brought their traditions, customs, and religion to the island, and their culture has had a profound impact on the island's culture. Today, the island's population is mostly of African descent, and many of the island's customs and traditions have their roots in the experiences of enslaved Africans. European influence can also be seen in the island's culture as a result of colonization by the French and the British. The island's architecture, language, and religion have been heavily influenced by European culture. The island's official language is English, and the island's architecture is a mix of traditional Caribbean and European styles. Finally, Indian influence can also be seen on the island's culture as a result of the presence of East Indian immigrants who came to the island to work on the sugar plantations in the 19th century. Indian culture can be seen in the island's food, music, and dance. Indian spices are also an important part of the island's cuisine and economy. Overall, Granada's culture is a unique and diverse mix of various influences, which makes it a fascinating place to explore and discover. 
The island's culture is celebrated through various festivals and events throughout the year, such as the Spice Moss, Emancipation Day and Karayaku Maroon and String Band Music Festival, that showcase the island's rich cultural heritage and allow visitors to experience the island's unique blend of cultures. The island's traditional music and dance is a mix of African, European, and Indian influences. As for traditional cuisine, the island is known as the Island of Spice because it is one of the world's leading producers of nutmeg, mace, and cinnamon. These spices are used in many traditional dishes, such as the oil down, which is a popular dish made with breadfruit, dumplings, and coconut milk. The island's traditional cuisine also includes dishes such as the Kalaloo soup, which is made with spinach and okra, and the lambi, which is a traditional dish made with conch. The island's traditional cuisine is often served at festivals and events, such as the Spice Moss, and it is a great way to experience the island's unique blend of cultures. The Spice Moss is celebrated in August of every year. The festival is a celebration of the island's rich cultural heritage and pays homage to the island's indigenous Caribs and their legacy. The festival features traditional music, dance, and cuisine, as well as a colorful parade featuring costumes made from local materials. Another popular festival in Grenada is the Emancipation Day, which is celebrated on the 1st of August every year. The festival marks the abolition of slavery in 1834 and it is a celebration of the island's African heritage. The festival features traditional music, dance, and cuisine, as well as a colorful parade featuring costumes made from local materials. The Karayaku Maroon and String Band Music Festival is another cultural event that showcases the traditional music of the island. The festival is celebrated on the island of Karayaku, a dependency of Grenada, and it is a celebration of the island's African heritage. Grenada also celebrates Christmas and Easter, which are two of the most important religious celebrations on the island. These days are celebrated with church services, traditional music and dance, and a colorful parade featuring costumes made from local materials. Grenada is a vibrant island nation that celebrates its rich cultural heritage through a variety of festivals and celebrations throughout the year. These festivals and celebrations provide visitors with a glimpse into the island's unique blend of cultures and are a great way to experience the island's unique blend of African, European, and Indian cultures. Tourism is one of the island's main industries, with over half a million visitors each year. The island is known for its beautiful beaches, crystal clear waters, and diverse marine life, which makes it a popular destination for diving and snorkeling. The island's rich cultural heritage and history also attract many visitors. The island has a wide range of accommodation options, from luxury resorts to small goose houses, and the government has been working to increase the number of visitors to the island. Agriculture is another important industry on the island, with the island being a leading producer of nutmeg, mace, and cinnamon. These spices are grown on small family-owned farms and play an important role in the country's economy. The island also produces other crops such as cocoa, ginger, turmeric, and cloves. Despite these economic strengths, the island faces several economic challenges such as high public debt, high unemployment, and a lack of diversification in the economy. The island has been dependent on a few key industries such as tourism and agriculture, and there is a lack of diversification in the economy. The island has a high youth unemployment rate, which has been a concern for the government. The government has been implementing various policies and initiatives to promote economic growth and address these challenges. One of the key initiatives has been to promote diversification in the economy by focusing on sectors such as renewable energy, information technology, and manufacturing. The government has also been working to improve the business environment by reducing bureaucracy and simplifying the process of starting a business. The government has also been implementing policies and initiatives to promote sustainable tourism by focusing on ecotourism and community-based tourism. This approach aims to balance the need for tourism growth with the protection of the island's natural and cultural resources, and also to ensure that the benefits of tourism are shared equitably among the island's communities. 
In addition, the government has been implementing various initiatives to support small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, and the agricultural sector by providing access to finance, training, and technical assistance. These initiatives aim to improve the competitiveness of these sectors and to create jobs and income opportunities for the island's people. The government has also been implementing policies to improve the island's infrastructure, such as upgrading the island's airports, harbors, and roads, to attract more tourists and investors to the island. The island is home to a diverse range of landscapes and ecosystems, which makes it a popular destination for nature lovers and outdoor enthusiasts. The island is home to a number of beautiful beaches, such as Grand Anse Beach, which is known for its white sand and crystal clear waters. The beach is popular for swimming, snorkeling, and diving, and it is also home to a diverse range of marine life, such as sea turtles, dolphins, and whales. Visitors can also enjoy a wide range of water sports, such as jet skiing and windsurfing. The island is also home to a number of waterfalls, such as the Seven Sisters Waterfall, which is a series of seven cascading waterfalls located in the Grand Etang National Park. The waterfalls are popular for swimming and picnicking, and visitors can also take a guided hike to explore the surrounding rainforest and spot a wide range of bird species. The Annandale Waterfall is another popular tourist destination. It is located on the outskirts of the capital, St. George's, and is a great place to relax and enjoy the island's natural beauty. Visitors can swim in the natural pools formed at the base of the waterfall, and there are picnic tables and restrooms available. The island also offers several other scenic waterfalls such as Concord and Douglas, which are also popular tourist destinations. Concord is located in the northern part of the island and is known for its beautiful surroundings and natural pools, making it a perfect spot for a refreshing swim. Douglas Waterfall, on the other hand, is located in the southern part of the island and is known for its picturesque setting and its natural pools, which are perfect for swimming and picnicking. In addition to its beaches and waterfalls, Granada also offers visitors a wide range of other activities, such as hiking and birdwatching in the island's protected areas, such as the Grand Etang National Park and La Vera National Park. Visitors can also explore the island's rich cultural heritage by visiting its museums, such as the Granada National Museum, and by participating in traditional festivals such as the Spice Moss. Granada is known for its diverse range of landscapes and ecosystems, and ecotourism and conservation efforts have become increasingly important on the island. Ecotourism is defined as responsible travel to natural areas that conserves the environment and improves the well-being of local people. Granada has a variety of ecotourism opportunities, including hiking, birdwatching, and snorkeling and diving in marine protected areas. The island also has several marine protected areas, such as the Moliner Bay Underwater Sculpture Park, which is home to a diverse range of marine life and is popular for snorkeling and diving. The marine protected areas are important for the conservation of the island's coral reefs and marine life, and they also provide opportunities for ecotourism activities. The government of Granada has also implemented several conservation efforts to protect the island's natural resources. These efforts include the creation of protected areas, the implementation of sustainable tourism practices, and the promotion of ecotourism. The government has also implemented policies to reduce pollution and to protect the island's coral reefs and marine life. Granada is a popular tourist destination known for its beautiful beaches and waterfalls, as well as its rich cultural heritage and history. Visitors to the island can enjoy a wide range of activities, such as swimming, snorkeling, diving, hiking, and birdwatching, as well as exploring the island's rich cultural heritage. Ecotourism and conservation efforts are becoming increasingly important in Granada, as the island is known for its diverse range of landscapes and ecosystems. The island offers several ecotourism opportunities, such as hiking, birdwatching, and snorkeling and diving in marine protected areas. The government has also implemented several conservation efforts to protect the island's natural resources, such as the creation of protected areas, the implementation of sustainable tourism practices, and the promotion of ecotourism. These efforts aim to balance the need for tourism growth with the protection of the island's natural and cultural resources, 
and also to ensure that the benefits of tourism are shared equitably among the island's communities. In conclusion, we hope you enjoyed our podcast on Grenada, a small island nation located in the Caribbean Sea known for its rich cultural heritage, history, natural beauty and diverse range of landscapes and ecosystems. We discuss the island's location, interesting facts and statistics, the island's indigenous people and early colonization, the island's role in the slave trade, key events and figures in Grenada's history such as the 1983 U.S. invasion, the island's diverse cultural influences and traditional music, dance, and cuisine. We also discuss the island's economy, which is heavily dependent on tourism and agriculture, and the government's efforts to promote economic growth and diversification. We also discuss the island's natural beauty, popular tourist destinations such as beaches, waterfalls, and ecotourism and conservation efforts. We encourage you to visit Grenada and experience the island's unique blend of cultures and natural beauty, or to learn more about the island's history, culture, and heritage. We also would like to thank you for listening to our podcast and we remind you to like and subscribe to our channel for more informative and interesting content.